Hollywood has discovered Vancouver Island and likes what it sees. The local film industry is booming, so much so that Parksville is about to be home to a new studio with three sound stages. But having skilled crews is critical to ensure the island gets more than 15 minutes of fame. North Island College has launched a new program to train local talent. John Helm is a gaffer and lighting technician with more than 30 years' experience in the industry. He's also an instructor in the college's pilot program, and he joins us on the phone from his home on Salt Spring Island to tell us more. John Helm, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Not bad. Yourself? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, you grew up on Salt Spring and have been in the industry since 1986 when uh, not so much was being made in B.C. What motivated you to get into film in the first place back then? Well, uh, originally, um, my my motive was to uh, join to make rock videos. Uh, it was around the time that Michael Jackson and Robert Palmer were making fantastic videos in the 80s. And as a musician, as a young man, I thought this would be the cat's ass. So it's uh, quite ironic. After 30 years, I've only done three videos, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, concentrated on features and uh, film and TV, you know, most of those years. Right? You say you've only done three videos. Were they right at the start, or have they kind of been peppered uh, no, throughout your career? No, over the course of the first 10 years. I found them very tedious to work on after a while, because they tend to like to work 18 to 20 hours a day. Ooh. They like to cram it in. They have limited time with their musicians, I would imagine. That's one of the main reasons. And, uh, yeah, a little bit hectic, you know, so I do like the more organized aspect of a film production, right? So... And so where has that work taken you? Have you traveled all over the place, or have you worked primarily? I have. I've traveled to nine countries um, and worked in nine various countries, and which has been great, kind of everywhere from Thailand, Tahiti, uh, Mexico, Hawaii. So I've I had a pretty good run, you know, uh, Europe included, three, three countries in Europe as well. And when you started in the 80s, John, how much work would have been available locally, either in Vancouver or, or, or you know, here on the island? Oh, not much. Uh, nothing in Victoria. We had, uh, when I actually started, there's only one show running in Vancouver, a uh, uh, CBC show called Danger Bay, which mm-hmm. people would be familiar with. Yep. And at that time, I got lucky and got on board, and uh, I went on board as a lamp op, a jenny op, and a best boy, which was all the positions under the gaffer, because there was only two of us. So it was a good training ground. But uh, I ended up getting bumped off by a union member, ironically, months later, as there was no work in town. So... I was very lucky to get my start when I did. Okay, but things are quite a lot different in 2017. I gather more productions are coming uh, to Vancouver Island. Is that right? That's correct, sir. Yeah, we. I think uh, Vancouver is running uh, over 30 productions at a time, uh, 25 to 30 plus. And uh, uh, Victoria has had a steady, steady pace this uh, this year, as as at Vancouver Island had several too as well up island, right? So Chesapeake Shores is a bit of the darling for up island. Uh, uh, from Hallmark Channel comes for four months a year and spends a lot of money in uh, Qualicum and Parksville, and uh, they've been a big advocate in the studios on the upper end, too. Yeah, so what can you tell us about those film studios? For people who don't know the industry, what are they and how important uh, might they be to Parksville? Well, I think the fact that um, they other, other productions see that um, Vancouver Island is serious about the production. That, uh, that it's not as hard as they might think it is to, you know, move a crew over here, which it does take uh, with actors and everything else to make it work, and then supplement with locals. They don't believe there's enough locals a lot of the time. By seeing the studios and the training going on, I think it really helps, right? They'll take a chance, you know, on the island a bit more, right? So. And how, how big is the capacity? What would it allow them to fill? Could you, could you film a, a TV series or a feature-length film? Or, or what? Yeah, the, it would, you could do a feature-length film, certainly, as using it as a backup and using, you know, the, um, uh, the actual Vancouver Island as a backdrop, you know, because there's so many beautiful places to see and work out of, right? But uh, most certainly, I believe that um, at least one production at a time could work out of there, right? And possibly more. Okay, and so this is all uh, uh, the backdrop to this expanded uh, work at North Island College. You've created the curriculum for a pilot film training course at North Island College. What would students learn in your course? Well, you'll learn all the basics. Um, uh, I don't know if people are aware, but the lighting department is also the electrical department for film. So Ah. we're in... We look after everything from generators to supplying the lights and foot candles on set with, for the director of photography, who I work with, to design the lighting plots and implement them as well, right? So in, in this course, it's a heavily subsidized government course, um, so it's quite cheap. You'll learn to uh, operate the lifts, which are the condors, the Z-booms. You'll get your, your work 
orientation permit for a set, which is a must. Uh, you'll get your WIMIS and your ACTSAFE, and uh, basically you'll have all the certification you need and three weeks of training, of basic training, so you'll be able to walk on a film set and be familiar with most of the gear and the process and, uh, you know, your place on a film set, so to speak. Right? Now, if people take that course and then they walk onto a film set, what would you advise them just about the, the likelihood of staying locally and working, or would they, would they be uh, expecting to travel a fair bit themselves? Well, there would be, if you really want it, you'd be expected to travel because the, the work does, it ebbs and flows. And uh, there, what's happening here on the island, though, over the course of the last 15, 20 years, there's been such great technicians over here and uh, trained young guys who now, of course, they follow the work to Vancouver to the bigger shows and for the opportunities to travel. So we also need to replace those people, right, as they get good. They like to come home and do shows when they can if the quality of work is there, but we continually need to keep a uh, training ground on the island that allows us to fill those slots as soon as somebody goes off to Vancouver, right? Mm. So or to another loca- a location where they'll take their skills, right? We, we used to hear anecdotal stories about how difficult it was to break into the film union. Do, do you think it might be easier for your students than it's been in the past? Well, it's our goal here is I've been working with IATSE 891 at the end of the course is uh, part of our testing will be to write the IATSE permit test, right? So this uh, course would be, uh, we have one course here in BC, a Cap College uh, uses, and uh, they get a, basically a straight in into the union into the permit category. So we've been working closely with the uh, lighting department and IATSE 891, and we're hoping that would be the same for my students as well, right, or for any island students, right? So it gives them a better start and confidence as well, right? So. The film business has been uh, pretty up and down in B.C. over the years, and I, I wonder if you think investing in more infrastructure and training here in the province might smooth out some of those booms and busts, or, or if they'll always be a part of the business. I, I really believe it'll always be part of the business. So it's, you know, it is an industry where, you know, you have to really step into it and be prepared to possibly not work for a month or two. You know, we do have slow months in the winter, right? So not to scare anybody off. But if you really want it and you really want to work hard for it, there, there is work year-round now, right? So as I said, you may have to travel, get on that ferry, which I do, and I've done from Salt Spring most of my life, uh, but uh, if, you, if you find yourself in the industry, you're most likely you'd love it, and you would love the fact that, you know, it takes you different places every day as well, right? But uh, I'm really trying to get an industry to be consistent in Victoria. You know, and Kathleen Gilbert's done a fantastic job as a commissioner in Victoria, you know, bringing steady work there, right? So, and if the kids get trained up island, you know, they're island kids. I believe they travel anywhere on the island to work, right? So. John, it's nice to talk to you. Uh, best of luck with the course. Okay, thank you, Gregor. And just to mention, there's uh, three or four spots still left in the Campbell River course in uh, November. Re- uh, reach out to North Island College, anybody interested, and a couple of spots left in Port Alberni for January. John Helm okay. is a gaffer and lighting instructor at North Island College's new TV and film crew training program. It's 20 minutes after 8 o'clock on a Monday morning. This is On the Island.